getting ready to loop it. So loop your belt uh, and then just slip it over your feet and take the belt around the back of your knees. And then we're just tightening it enough to provide a little bit of support. That's really all you want is to feel like your legs are comfortable and not straining. And of course, we wouldn't want that anyway. If you felt uh, when you sit down, like your knees are too high, or perhaps your knees are bothering you, then you would want to sit up higher. Uh, a couple more blankets would be a good idea, or another blanket at least. But if you feel good at the height you're on, because that makes a big difference in how your back feels. So that's really what I'm thinking. So take your seat and put your belt, slip it over your feet, and then around the back of your knees. And then once you get there, just see if you need it to be tighter or looser. Because uh, you kind of know, mine is a little loose. So I'm just going to tighten it a little bit. I don't want to press my knees back toward each other. I want to support my knees relaxing away from each other. And that's a big difference between feeling constrained and feeling safe. So then put your hands on your knees, your thighs, and just draw your chest up. So from the center of your spine going up, feeling like the mid back is going up and in forward. But then to kind of help that along, we're going to take our chest, our, our collarbones, our spine slightly forward. So you're just leaning at an angle. Everything comes with you, your head, your shoulders, your ribs, everything. But then once you get there, you think, could I get my collarbones a little higher? So if you could get your collarbones a little higher, then you know, we're still leaning forward. Then you would feel your back body sort of react to that. And it's a, it's a good thing. And then come back up and try to feel from the waist to the ribs, right in the back, some length. Create some length in the back area between your waist and your ribs. And then lift your ribs away from that action and roll your shoulders slightly back. I guess I, the real thing is to take your shoulders and, and just broaden them as much as you can and take the shoulder blades forward. So the shoulder blades are like little hinges practically. They, they could be straight down or they could be slightly forward, the bottom of them. And that's what we would want. The bottom of the shoulder blades slightly forward to support the lift of the chest. And that's a lot of discussion of sitting, but really this is important. So the sides of your feet, the cross of your shins, the knees being supported, that's all a big part of the base, as well as the sacral band, the pelvis, the sacrum, and both of those are lifting up. The ribs are lifting away from that. And then bring your hands together in prayer. And then just don't close your eyes yet. Just have your hands together and have your hands right in front of your, uh, really it's the lower part of your sternum, not so much up, but a little lower. And then the elbows go down and the armpits go up and the chest goes up. And then breathe through your nose, inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose, which is the best way to breathe according to scientific evidence that mouth breathing is irritating to the lungs. And right now, especially, we want to practice our nose breathing all day long. I, I, I noticed that I'm breathing through my nose always anyway now, now that I've done yoga so long. So you're drawing your elbows down, your armpits up, close your eyes, relax your face, soften your jaw and go inward, go inward away from your day, away from what they like to call external reality. <laughs> but we know what that means. We mean all the things in the world that really don't have anything to do with our innermost self. You know, we're, we're distracted by all of it. And certainly our lives are very important, but there's this place inside ourselves that really doesn't have anything to do with all of that and has something to do with something about you that's very deep inside. And that's what we're trying to nourish, contact, honor. This is yoga for us and it does a lot. And, and then when it does a lot for us, it does a lot for everyone around us and we know that. So as you're sitting here, center yourself so that the spine feels in the center, 
the elbows feel like they're descending, but that they're on either side of the center of you quite evenly, and that your chest is even, your collarbones are even. Pull your abdomen back, your belly button especially, and just go in, prepare for yoga. And then with your chest really well lifted, your heart really well lifted, bow your head to your heart. Bring your hands down to your thighs, palms up. Then, then before you open your eyes, just be sure that you're broadening your collarbones, your shoulder blades are moving into your chest. Then open your eyes down in front of your shins and bring your head back up. And then, then now let's take the belt off and cross our legs the other way. So that's a lot of discussion about going inward, but uh, this is our practice. You know, we leave behind all this other stuff and we go in. And so especially feeling center is really great. So with your hands on your thighs, elbows down, armpits up, just lift yourself up and then take your thumb and first finger together so that you're creating this mudra. And you're gonna put the three fingers right at the top of your thighs near the crease of your legs. Your thumb and first finger are um, not on your legs and your elbows are drawing down and your chest is drawing up and you're just breathing. And so now hold your abdomen firm, but also lengthen it. Feel like the abdomen, the front body scan is really much more lifted than you are during the regular day and then draw your shoulders down. So just looking, looking maybe out at the floor, maybe, you know, just if you could draw a line from the, um, the bridge of your nose down toward the floor, you would be looking in that direction. And there is some evidence that with your eyes relaxed, they're not closed, they're relaxed, that your brain is relaxed as well. Draw the back of your arms down into your elbows and breathe. And then straighten your legs. And now, um, just for sake of me not getting too confused, <laughs> let's all take our right chin and up. So we're now gonna do a little, I, I like to start my practice with a little bit of a seated flow and this idea, I've been lots of different ways to do it, but we've got this belt. So take your belt and uh, it doesn't matter, you don't have to take the loop out or anything. So you've just got this belt and you're, you're gonna hold it behind your back with both hands. So you're gonna take your hands behind your back, holding that belt, probably at the, well, it's up to you, isn't it? It's maybe to be safest, it's at the, it's at the width of your hips. So your hands are at the, about that wide and then draw your hands down toward the floor. So that, you know, behind your um, seating position beside your lift, you've got the floor. <laughs> so reach down to the floor with your hands, holding that belt, and then lift your armpits up and hold your abdomen back and breathe. So this is um, seated cow. So this is that real nice back bending action. And then we're gonna take our, so my blocks are beside me, but I just wanna take my, your right hand down to the floor and your, and your other hand to your waist. And we start this way to double check that our shoulders are okay with this. But as we're here, you know, we feel the curve, but the curve has to come on the right side of your torso as well. So first of all, put your left buttock down consciously. And then the next thing to do is lengthen from your um, sit bone all the way up to your armpit on the right side and curve. So you're curving, it's like you're tilting over, but it's like your ribs are holding you back from that and breathe and then come back to center and go the other way. So now you've got your left hand on the floor, your right hand on your waist, you're curving. And the only reason I've got my hand here for now is I can, I can curve. <laughs> my arm doesn't have to do anything for this curve to happen. I would like a little extension into the elbow. Curve your left side body and then come back up really tall. Feel really tall and put your um, left hand on your right knee and your right hand behind you and sit up really tall. So this, before we go anywhere, 
you want to feel both sit bones firmly down. And one that, you know, one sit bone gets light when you take your hand over, don't, uh, don't buy into that, you know, pull that down and keep that down and lift up tall and then gently, gently, gently start turning over to the right with your torso, but you're not leaning. You know, it's as if the spine is not going to lean left or right, it's right in the center, twisting. And then uh, hold your abdomen really firm and tall as you come back and the other hand. So then the other hand and you're going over. So lifting, 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 turning and breathing. So no turn is a good idea until the spine is fully lifted. And then it feels wonderful. And then come back to center. Now cross your legs the other way. Now we can take our arms behind us and we can hold on to our hands or we can hold on to that belt. And I gave you the belt so that if your shoulders would like a little more space, uh, but if you can hold your hands and clasp them, do. And when you do that, of course, the shoulder blades come right toward each other as well as down. So there's that action in the shoulder blades that's pretty obvious. And then lift from the waist to the rib cage in the back and breathe. So your hands are down further than the lift you're sitting on, I would think, my arm. And armpits are way up and you're breathing. And now you're gonna undo that and take your uh, right hand down. And now you're gonna take your left hand up. If you can, otherwise you're here. But if you can, and then we're going over. So big, long side stretch. Get the same curve and length on your right side body that you're getting on your left. And then come back to center and put your uh, left hand down and take your right arm up and curve over to the uh, toward the left. And when you're doing that, just breathe and then come back to center and take your left hand to your right knee, your right hand behind you, lift up strongly, turn. So we're turning toward our right, but not with any less attention to the left. It's like there's always time, room for someone else in your mind and it's now your left buttock and you're keeping it down and now turn and turn. But really from the left buttock to the right collarbone, feel like there's a connection through your body that, you're, that, that really helps the left side body. And then come back to center and take your right hand to your left knee, other hand behind you, lift up really, really tall, really tall, start turning. So your right ribs now are coming forward, your left ribs are coming back, and both buttocks are down, both side bodies even, breathing, and then come back to center. Now straighten your legs out, and we're gonna go the first way, which will be your right chin in front. So the practice today, and I think it's, it'll, it's so nice because it's all about space opening. And this is what we need. You know, when I get nervous, and I know this is true for everybody, close down. Mm -hmm. No, let's just stay open, keep our spines lifted, bring your arms up. So stretch your arms up as high as you can. Now, maybe they're better like this. You know what I'm saying? You should think about your, let's start, let's make sure, let's make sure. Let's take our hands down to the floor and turn our thumbs back. So with the fingertips on the floor, thumbs turned way back, bring the arms up a little bit. So this would be just lovely if that's all you can do before your shoulders say no more, because it's your shoulders, your upper arms that may speak. As you bring your arms up, you're just testing the waters and you're testing your neck now. Is your neck able to stay lengthened and your shoulder skin rolling down? If you can bring your arms all the way up and that's still true, good. But you're always welcome to keep your arms a little wider for the sake of your neck, for the sake of your shoulders. Draw your arms up, draw your arms way, way up. So I feel now like um, if I could hold on to a rope, you know, if I was at the wall and I had the ropes and I was holding on so that it was even more, more um, lengthened than I'd ever really could do on my own, but now oh, I can do it on my own. Now turn your thumbs forward and bring your arms down. So all about space, opening, broadening, lifting, all the good things. Take your leg the other way, so now the left shin comes in front. 
And again, then, you know, I, I didn't say it before, but we all know we have to readjust our buttock flesh because you really want to be centered. And the important thing about lifting and opening is being centered too. So bring your arms up if you can and remember wide if you need. And armpits are open. So now feel like your outer arms are lifting away from the outside of your armpits. And your inner armpits are just lifting up, but your ears aren't going anywhere. You know, and you don't have to do anything with your ears. They'll stay right where they are and breathe. And now with all sorts of awareness into your torso, abdomen and lift and space, turn toward the right knee with your belly button. So take your belly button toward the right knee and if it doesn't want to go there, don't go there. You know, just go where you can go comfortably and you're stretching the right side of your torso as evenly as the left and come back to center and go the other way. So there's this nice rotation through the center of you, through the belly button, through the ribs, lift up strongly, breathe, 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 and then come back to center and turn your thumbs forward and bring your arms down. Now, <clears throat> we're going to come off of our lift. No, 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 we're not. I have the blocks there for a reason. I put the blocks there for a reason. So the blocks are there beside me and they could be at the highest level. They could be at the second level or they could be at the lower level. I'm gonna put mine at the second level because um, I know I know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you don't know yet and you're like, what should I do? You'll know. So we're gonna take our right forearm and we're gonna take it down toward that block. That's why, so, now, if this is just absolutely impossible, but maybe at the high level it is, you see, and this is Joe's little routine, so um, don't get mad at me. Um, the palm is up, the forearm is straight out of the elbow, so you see where you can, so of course, the lower the block, the more you're tilting off the left buttock, keep the left buttock down, keep the left buttock down. So I've got my hand on my, on my right hip, my, your left hip, I'm pressing it down. I'm pressing it down and then I'm lengthening both sides of my torso. So it isn't just the obvious left side that's stretching. Stretch the right side up and to the side. And if you can take your arm up and over, so you're trying to touch the two hands toward each other. Um, and I really don't intend to bring my hands to touch. Although I know some of you could, let's not overdo. And then carefully with your abdomen, come back up because really the abdomen can help. And then we're gonna go the other way. So that's quite a stretch, I mean, I think. Um, so your, your forearm is down, but your palm is up. And then you have to really refocus on the right hip, the right buttock, keep that down because that's only the thing that's gonna help you. Curve both sides of your torso and take your right arm up and over and breathe and breathe. So this is all just kind of at your own level of comfort, but also you want that big open stretch and then come back up and then straighten your legs. So that was a, that was an you can do that at home in your practice. All these things are really good, but you should feel like you really did something through this area that we're trying to lengthen because that was really helped. So now we're going to come away from the, all of this and we're going to lie down on the floor uh, on our back and we're going to take our blank one of the blankets and we're going to roll it up. So just into a nice firm lift. So, um, and now those of you who've taken classes from me um, before, and you know I like this, well, I like this only because it's good for our necks. And I learned this from George Purvis, who's a physical therapist of some kind too. So he's got all these little techniques. He said this is for the neck. And so I'm going to show you what we're going to do, but I've got another blanket handy because as um, lately, <laughs> and maybe this is just age and maybe it's something else, you always say to yourself, why is it different now? When I bring, I'm going to bring the center of my shoulder blades onto this lift and I'm holding onto the back of my head 
because my head is a heavy, heavy thing, 14 pounds for most of us. So it's right in this, right on the shoulder blades, not our favorite place to be. And then the head comes down. Oh, see, this morning my head will come down. How funny. Yeah, yesterday there was no way it was coming down without a blanket. So if you need a blanket behind your head, so it's just fine. And then when you get here, just put your elbows beside your ribs and your fingers pointing up and your legs are down firmly. So you should feel, so then put your hands on the floor by your buttocks, put your, bend your knees, and then just inch your buttocks a little closer to your shoulders, just a little bit so there's more of a curve in your lower back. Really maintain an arch of your back and the lower back is really curved. And then bring your arms up over your head. If this is po not possible for you because your shoulders don't like it, take your elbows to the side of you and be in cactus. But otherwise, arms straight up, thighs straight down, arms over the head, thumbs to the floor. Stretch your fingers away from you and stretch the soles of your feet away from the fingers that are stretching the other way. And then you might even notice your thighs in the back they probably are not exactly the same side to side. So just create as much similarity between the calves and the hamstrings that are on the floor and the back of the knees and the heels, you know, because you can't see them. The feedback has to come from sensation that you've got. So now you should feel like you're on the ramp, right? <laughs> this is just what you needed. You know, your back needs this nice long stretch. Abdomen should feel really long, like it's been pulled toward your toes and it's been pulled toward your chest in the nicest possible way. And then bring your arms up over your head and just place your hands on your abdomen for a second. So notice how your neck feels in the back. If your neck feels like it's not long, See that we do want to curve in our neck, but we don't want to feel like our neck is strained in any way. There's another blanket for you to put it under there. If you're good, take your arms up over your head again. So your arms come up over your head, and then before you do anything else, just center your face to the ceiling so that right down the center of your face, from the center of your forehead, through the nose, through the lips, chin, throat, chest, everything is centered. Your spine is centered, and then notice if you're on both buttocks evenly, and make sure that's true, and then take your arms over. Nothing is left to chance in yoga, in a younger yoga. We don't just say, do the pose. We give you every single option, caveat, everything, so that you, you're fully informed as you're doing this pose, what is going on and what you might do differently if you don't like this. <laughs> but I like this because I feel like I could use all this stretch and length on opening and space. And then bring your arms back up and bring your hands down and then bend your knees and then roll over to the side onto the right side and then come up for a second. And take, if you have a blanket under your head, take that away. And then, we're going to take our hands on one side of the roll and our knees on the other. And I'm just going to give you a little advice. Don't have your hands too close to the blanket, but don't have them too far away either. So I'd say give yourself two inches with your wrists in front of that blanket. And if you know this, you already know what's going to happen. You're going to be, you're going to be held back from your habits. So go up into dark facing dog and just see whether your hand, arms, forms are, are touching the blanket yet with your heels as high as possible. So right now, just take your heels up and your buttocks up. You can bend your knees for the sake of your hamstring and pull your shoulders up, but your ears don't change, you know. Your shoulders go up, your armpits get open, and then just start pulling your thighs away from you. And now your forearms are either on that blanket or they're smashing that blanket down because, you know, we're having to do work a little differently. We're having to work a little differently. So then come down and let's just chat for a second. Um, so that is a 
that's a way to work on a problem that we all have in dog pose, which is we know we want our chest to come and our armpits to come toward our knees, but we sometimes do it by relaxing our elbows down too far because that's kind of where we think we should. So this doesn't allow that. You can see that. Let's try it one more time. So your hands are on either side of that blanket. Now, if that was just so horrible for you, it will be better this time because it's a second. But also, if it's way too much, take inch your hands further forward, but not too much, and then come back up. So now this is the second dog pose. And we're maybe a little more comfortable being here right now with my heels high and my armpits just as open as they can be and my ears where they were before, not to worry about them. I feel like I'm not really smashing onto my forearms yet. But then I'm going to take my heels away from my toes and, you know, descending them a little bit and take my thighs away from my torso. And then all of a sudden, now my forearms are really speaking to me. And it's my shoulders too, so don't go too far. Don't go too far because this will get better if we do it again, which we certainly will. And then come down. So what we're trying to open is the armpit area. And so that's the goal. Now that blanket that we were on, I smashed it down pretty good. <laughs> Can't get a nice roll in it again. I don't know what my problem is, but I think I know. And then I'm going to bring my shoulder blades at the bottom of them right here to the, sh to the blanket. This, this one we all like because we are comfortable with this one. We know this one. You can also have something for your head, but it's a little easier than the one we just did where we were right on the blades. Now we're on the bottom part of the blades. I always look at my feet before I put my head down because I don't want to wonder where my feet are. So then I'm holding the back of my head as I put my head down. Now again, for a moment, let's just take our arms to the side, palms up. So we're on this, that you can now feel like your shoulder blades are tilted upward, right? Instead of the shoulder blades themselves are not flat toward the floor, they're lifted up because the blanket is right under them and holding them up. And so that's, for me, a good feeling. And then press your thighs down, both thighs, and then just stretch through your arms. But then bring your arms up over your head again, if you can. Now remember, we're being careful. Saguaro cactus arms, if this doesn't feel good, before you go anywhere, press your thighs down. Your femurs, press them down. But how are we gonna do that? Oh yes, with the quadriceps. Press the quadriceps down, stretch through the heels, bring your thumbs down to the floor, if you can and stretch into the fingertips away from the soles of the feet. So everything is getting a nice long length and breathe. With the thighs on the floor though, your back is so protected. You should really feel that. With your thighs pressing as hard as they can, then your back says, I have the freedom to stretch. I have the freedom to open and lengthen and create all this space. Now, Take your um, fingernail side of your hands down, palms up. I'm not saying touch your thumbs. You could, but for some of us, that's, that's good. For others, the shoulders don't like it as much. Do what you need to do. Stretch now with your fingernails away from the heels. So your heels are down, uh, obviously, and just stretch and open and breathe. And then undo all that and roll over to the right side and come up. And of course, we're going back to our downward facing dog. So I really promise you this one will be better because they just get better as we go, as we get more used to where we need to work. So our hands are slightly in front of our roll. Come up into downward facing dog. And then this time, just immediately take your thighs away from your hands. So feel like your, if your heels are up, that's fine. That's no problem. If your knees are bent, that's fine. But it's just that the legs have to move further back. So it's as if from the armpit to the hip, there's a longer distance away from the hands. 
and then notice the armpits, but notice the shoulders. If your shoulders don't like this so much, come up onto your heels and lift your shoulders away from that action. You know, don't suffer, don't suffer. Come down if you're suffering and hold your thighs back. Well, there's a little bit of suffering, right? We don't, we don't mind a little bit of, of good suffering and then come down. You know, that was always the distinction that was made in yoga that I could remember. Is it good or is it not good? We don't want to do uh, injury suffering. Okay, so we've done, we've done a really nice opening through the armpit chest, which you might not really know, but you might not have thought about it. So now we're going to take our two blankets again, and we're going to put them on the floor, and we're going to bring a chair in, in front of us. So I will, I want to walk behind me. So I'm going to bring my chair in. And you know, if you have a kitchen chair, it's fine. If you, if you have a, if you have a couch even, and that's all you have, that's fine. But we're going to sit with a facing this um, surface that we're going to put our forearm on and take your, um, well, I'll do the same. Take your right shin in front, and then you're not sitting back too comfortably on the chair, on the, on the lift, rather. You're sitting a little bit forward, and then you bring the chair toward you. So it's like your knees are almost touching the chair, and then your left forearm is going to come to the chair seat. And then, and then your, your right hand is going to go back to the block. But before you, I, at least I need a block because of my height, and you might not, but it's always nice to have one just in case. But before we go anywhere, you're just going to look, put your right hand on the blanket that you're sitting on and just press down and place your elbow, forearm, hand on the chair seat, a palm down, and lift your spine in and up. So one thing that happens when we put our forearm is we kind of lean which is okay, but try to lift your chest up, even though we're leaning a little bit toward the chair. Because remember when we twist, we want to kind of bring our spine forward. So lift up, lift up, lift up. Take your right hand to the block behind you, if that works for you, and then start curving, twisting, lifting. Everything is lifted, centered, and twisting. So both buttocks down as evenly as you can, Especially that left buttock, you know, which you, we didn't forget about, but it might have gotten light. Make it really heavy and connect that left buttock bone to the right collarbone and use that stretch and twist. So your left buttock stays down, your right collarbone broadens, broadens, broadens. I haven't turned my head too much yet, uh, maybe more than I even should have. I think it's best not to turn your head until you're really lifted, and then you can turn your head maybe towards your right shoulder a little bit, and you'll know whether that's a good thing for you to do or not. And then hold your abdomen at really firm and come back to center. So that's a pretty big twist. And now we're gonna take our right forearm to the chair and our left hand behind us. But before we take the left hand behind us again, put your left hand on your left, and then lift up really tall, so now I'm going the other way. So now my back is to you, where my chest was to you before. Both sides are so important. The chest side and the back side and the side body too. Hips down firmly, hand on the back. Uh, left hand is on the blanket to start with. Lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Take your hand to the block. Start turning toward the left. And then both sit bones are down. And it's now the right sit bone and the left collarbone, and they're little partners here as we twist through the center to the left. That right buttock stays firmly down, and the right side body stays evenly up, and we twist. And so just breathing and twisting, going where you can. So obviously the right ribs are coming toward the chair seat, the left ribs are going back toward the hand behind you and the spine is right in the center and you're twisting. And then come back to center. And then straighten your legs up for a second. And then cross your legs the second way. 
So now, just the second way, the way that you were, in case you weren't doing the same side as me, just the second way. And then put your left forearm down. And now we know to lift tall. You know, twists are so beautiful if there is spinal extension between each of the vertebrae. That's really what we want. So we're guaranteeing that. We are, we are really being careful. So your, civic, your buttock bones are down firmly, both of them. Your form's on the chair, and that helps you. And you don't have to push too much. You're just using it to lift your chest up, 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 up. Your hand comes back toward the block behind you and start twisting from the left sit bone to the right collarbone, all the way through the center of your spine. So your left ribs are coming toward the chair seat, your right ribs are going back toward the hand on the block. Your chest should be really even and just turning. And then if it's available to your neck, because really your neck is gonna tell you, you could turn your head a little bit toward your right shoulder blade collarbone area. You know, your shoulder blade now is clamping downward and your collarbone is broadening. So if we had a clamp and we could clamp the shoulder blade down as we turn the collarbone, that would really be helpful. And then come back to center. That's an image provided by Virgin Mehta. He would say, clamp the shoulder blade down. These two are partners as well. So now your right forearm goes over, your left hand comes behind. So now you can try to imagine that with your left shoulder blade is going down. It's really going down toward the ribs, toward the buttock, and then the collarbone is broadening. So the collarbone broadens, the shoulder moves down, and we start turning, turning, turning toward the left. We already know that we need it to lift. So we did that. So lift and turn and breathe and open and create all the space, the space between the vertebrae the space between the two sides of the ribs. You know, just everything is really open. And then come back to center. And then take the block from behind you and come off of your lift. And we're gonna put our hands on the chair and step our feet back. So whatever you, you were using for your forearm, you can use for your hands. And then step your feet back into a long chair dog. And then we're gonna notice the difference between all the weight into our hands that we had before, right? Because in chair dog, the weight in your hands is much less than it was. And so what I would think that would be best for all of us would be to bend our knees. I think everybody could, yes, because if you can bend your knees, yes, yes, that's beautiful. So wherever your hands are, you're just bending your knees Good, that's nice. And taking the spine inward, inward toward the chest. To, yes, yes. So the shoulders are moving away. And you know, you always have to be careful of your shoulders and your neck. So this is great. And breathe, and breathe. Beautiful. Good. Bend your knees and step in and come up. And then we have a chair. So um, even if you just have a, a couch, this is fine. So, but I want you to sit up on something and then we're, so I'm gonna turn my chair forward and I'm gonna put a block between my feet as I sit down on my chair. So I'm gonna sit on my chair. I'll move the blankets so that everything is more obvious. So I've got a block. I'm sitting on my chair, but I'm not sitting on my chair as in a tea party. I'm sitting on my chair as in buttocks in the top of my thighs. So I'm just moving my chair back until my knees and my ankles line up. And then put your hands on it. If you're sitting on a comfy chair and it doesn't have side, if you have a yoga chair, of course, we all can take our hands to the bottom of the chair seat and lift our chest up away from that. But if you don't have that, you just, just put your hands behind you on whatever surface you're sitting on and lift. So if you have a yoga chair, take your hands back to the chair back of the seat and hold that and lift up. So we're really lifted. And then bring your hands to your thighs. So now you feel really lifted, right? Now we're going to take our left arm up and our right, I'm mirroring you, and your right hand down. So now 
lengthen from the right hip to the right hand. Feel like there's all this space, but now lengthen from the left hip to the right, to the left shoulder using the hand. So there's two ways to get traction here. One is through lift and one is through pull. So pull and then bring your right hand down, left hand down to the block in front of you and your right hand to your sacrum. So you want to feel now like you're lined up between your thighs with your spine. You're not leaning over the right in any way. You're not leaning back to the left. And lift your, before you twist, lift your collarbones. You're leaning forward. You're leaning forward and your collarbones are lifting and your shoulder blades are relaxing to the buttock area, toward that area, and start twisting to the right. And the breathing here is so important. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, and just lengthen your torso. That's almost more important than the twist. Once you've lengthened your torso, then the twist is just beautiful. But if it's too short, you know, you end up being unhappy. We don't want that. Take your right elbow back. Take your left hand down, your right elbow back, and then undo, and then come back up. So if you get enough lift on these twists, the twists feel really good. But now we're gonna take our right arm up and our left hand down. And do you see how you can pull your side body long using your arm pulling up? Or you can pull your long arm down and the torso resists that. So both sides of the torso should be equally long doing very different things. Shoulder blade skin going down, breathing. And then we're gonna bring our right hand down to the block in the center. And breathe. And then take your left hand and put it on your sacrum. But stay, and before you go anywhere, imagine that the crown of your head is extending away from your tailbone. Your tailbone is not on the surface of the chair because you're more on the hamstrings now, don't you feel that? Your buttocks are kind of lifted, that's fine. And you're lengthening, lengthening, lengthening before we start twisting. So then as you twist, press into your right hand, take your left elbow back, keep your head in line with your spine, so don't be in any hurry to turn your head, and lengthen your collarbones away from your uh, sit bones. So that consciousness into your collarbones comes from the base of the buttocks, the hamstring. Twist, twist, best you can. And then come back to center. So again, check your posture here that your knees over the ankles, the block right between your feet at the high level, your hands down, either down or on the chair, lifting up. You can even take your hands to the chair legs. Whatever works for you. We're just trying to create the biggest lift in our armpits that we can. And then we're gonna bring both arms up really tall, really tall. And now, if this is available to you, you're gonna take your left hand down to the block and the right hand back to the chair, uh, to the back of the chair. The, top of the back of the chair. And then if you don't have that kind of chair, do your best. You can still keep your hand on your sacrum if you need. But if you've got your hand back on that chair rung, then you're gonna use that and you're gonna lean away from that with your torso. So you're holding really, obviously, you know, now I feel like if I let go with my hand, I would come flying off the chair. I'm using that arm so strongly, chest, 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 Collarbones lifting, abdomen firm. Now start turning toward the right with your torso, with your left hand down as resistance to the twist. So it's helping you. The, the left hand is helping you by being down, gives you some way to judge where you are, and then you're turning your ribs. Your buttocks don't change, your knees shouldn't change. Mine are changing a little bit, they shouldn't. And then just lengthen and twist, lengthen and twist. And breathe, be sure you breathe in the inhale into the lift, the exhale into the twist. And then come back up. 
So that's a lot. If you're using your hand on the back there, that's a big stretch through the lower back, which you might not have felt before. Bring your arms up over your head. So your arms can be wide, your arms can be toward each other. That's always your option. Arms up, armpits up, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Then we bring our right hand down and our left hand behind. So either the left hand is on your sacrum, if that's better for you, or your hand is holding the chair, which is really a big, big movement. And then you just lift your collarbones away from whichever choice you made there. And lift and lift, and then you can start turning toward the, um, toward the left this time. So your right ribs are coming underneath you, your left ribs are lifting up. And you're breathing, and you're lengthening, and you're breathing. So everything is just really, really long and twisted. And then come back up to center. So that's another one. If you have a chair and a block, you can do it at home. And it's a, it's a good twist, well, obviously. And then we're going to take our chair, and we're going to do another chair dog. So uh, just do a chair dog best you can. Feel, feel the comfort of that. I really don't want you to stress about this or work too hard. I want you to lengthen and enjoy. So bend your knees as much as you can. Bend your knees as much as you can. Yes. You know, when you bend your knees, because I'm looking at you, when you bend your knees, and then keep your, one thing you might try is keeping your, I see several of you are doing it, keeping your ears between your upper arms a little, yes, and then lengthening away from that action, yeah. So you pull your shoulder blades the other way. So that looks, everybody looks really good. I think, Riley, if you bent your knees, you'd enjoy your upper, yeah, yeah, that, that changed your upper back a little bit. That looks good. That looks beautiful. Breathe. Really nice. Really nice. Good, good, good. And then come back up. So, of course, <laughs> when we come back up, we're like, oh, that was a nice long twist. Now, um, now we're going to do a pose that I've been doing, but I didn't give an important instruction. Well, it's just a thought. So I'm going to turn my chair forward again. I want to make sure you can see me, so I'm going to check my screen. So can you see me? Yes, you can. Okay, so I've got a chair, and I've got a sticky mat on the chair, and I'm now going to put a blanket on the chair, too. So um, the blanket is going to go on the chair so that it provides a cushion to the side of the chair, to the front, you know, just provides a nice cushion. And then I'm going to sit on my chair just where the way we usually do, which is to say, um, with the buttocks and the hamstrings, but not the entire hamstring. So just bring your uh, feet hip width apart, your knees hip width apart, and place your hands down, maybe on the chair legs, and lift your armpits up and breathe. So, but this nice cushion here, now you feel like you're sitting on something softer, that's a little more protective of your sit bones, your hamstrings, and you're going to lift your armpits up and breathe and breathe. So now what we're going to do, though, is we're going to shift our buttocks a little bit toward the right of our chair. So it isn't that the sit bones come off the chair. It's that the left sit bone stays on the chair with the quadricep right in line with the hip. And then the left foot turns out, the right foot turns out. So you've got now, and then you've got the corner of the chair seat, which you've protected with a cushion, and your buttocks appreciate that. And then you're going to take your uh, right leg and just stretch it out, and the heel is down and the toes are up. And then you're going to put your right hand on your left knee. So this is gate latch pose sitting on a chair. So if we were in regular gate latch pose, this left knee would be on the floor, the left shin would be on the floor, right? But now the left, I'm mirroring you, but your left shin is not on the floor, it's, it's perpendicular to your thigh. 
it's just the way it would be if we were on the knee, but we're not. And now just hold on to the um, chair seat or the chair, something about the chair with your um, left hand and just take your uh, right hand down to your thigh, down to your knee, sort of. And then start, just put your hand on your waist now as you take your hand a little bit lower, not too far, not too far. And if you've got a chair, you can even hold the back of the chair and take your a hand, but it doesn't come too far because you have to keep your left, your right buttock down. You have to keep your right buttock down, your left buttock down, both buttocks down as you're going. And then you're gonna come back up. I think it looks good. And you, and you don't have to be on the kneecap. See, some people's kneecaps just can't do that. So we're coming the other way. So now we've got, now, you know, the, it's like you just shifted your buttocks so that one buttock can be completely on the chair with the knee coming out of it. And the other knee turns away. So you're sort of like at a right angle with both thighs. And then you take your, uh, left leg and straighten it. See, I don't feel like in gait latch pose, normal gait latch pose, to get my uh, extended foot down is so hard and to keep it up is so hard. This way it's just there, you don't have to worry about it. And take your left hand to the outside of your right knee just to uh, get the length and the awareness of both sides of the torso. Of course, that's not the direction we're going to go. And then you're going to take your left hand down to your left knee. You can hold on to the chair, the back of the, ch the chair wrong. You can take your hand to your sacrum, whatever works for you. The idea, though, is to keep your chest um, lifted away from your ribs and also um, level as best you can. And you're taking your uh, left hand down and you're holding them desperately onto the right buttock. <laughs> and, well, desperate sounds bad, but we mean it seriously. And then come back up. Good. And then go to the first side. So see, I just move over a little bit. Both buttocks are still there. It's that the, it's that the right buttock is at an, is turned away from the left buttock a little bit. Don't you agree? The buttocks are kind of moving toward each other a little bit. Your heel is down, your metatarsal's up, you're looking toward your left knee. And so this is one thing that Iyengar said that I thought was so interesting. You know, something gets in your mind that he said, but he said each buttock goes with its own leg. And he said, each leg goes with its own buttock. So in this case, the left knee is forward and the buttock is kind of like you're sitting normally, but the right leg is going off to the side, so the buttock has had to adjust to go with it. Now, breathe and take your arms to the side. And now, before you do anything else, put as much weight into your left buttock as you can. Sink that buttock down, lengthen your torso, Turn your palms up. Spread through the armpits. Now, the thing that's going to be the balance here, the counterbalance to your right arm coming down, is going to be your left arm stretching away to start with, your left buttock and your left heel. Bring your right hand down. You're not going to fall over because you're pressing into your right heel, your left heel, I'm sorry, your left heel as strong as you can. Take your right arm down. Take your left arm and stretch it away. So you feel like you're in this really extended side flank pose. It's a lot like Parsvakanasana, isn't it? Yeah, stretch, stretch, stretch. If you can take your arm over now, take your arm over. Don't forget the left buttock. Don't forget the left heel. Turn, lengthen, and then come back up. Three arms down. And then go to the other side. So it's not too far to the other side, right? Because you can't bring your left buttock off the chair. You just want your right buttock more in the center. And your right buttock and your knee are all lined up. That buttock is going with that leg. Now take your left leg to the side onto the heel. So now the, that buttock has to go that way. And it's happy to go along because it wouldn't be happy otherwise. This thigh right at the left thigh is rolling externally. You should feel that too. Into the inner leg. Stretch your arms. 
and then now press your right buttock down so strongly. And it's funny how one bike is a better protector than the other. This side, I have to almost force my buttock to stay down. And then the heel, and then the thigh, and breathe. And then this arm is gonna to resist too. Turn your palms up, bring your left hand down, stretch your right arm away. So you can see that the counterbalance of the weight here, now is the two arms, the buttock, the heel of the left side is really, uh, the right side is really helping. Now, if you can take your arm over, you do, but you're doing it from the right buttock staying down. Right buttock staying down, breathing, breathing, breathing. And then come back up. All right, that is chair gate latch pose. Now, you can take the blanket off your chair, we're done with that. And you can put your hands on the chair and step your feet back into chair dog. So chair dog becomes our pose that is done between some other poses. You know, oftentimes it's dog pose of some kind. Oftentimes it's uchanasana of some kind. It's more of a familiar pose that we know so well. Hands are on your, the chair seat. And my knees are bent because I still feel like I get my best length that way. Then I can lift my, then I can open the back of my knees. I can open the back of my legs, but my torso remains the way it was. Pull your thighs up and away from your ankles. Pull your chest forward away from the top of your thighs. And breathe. And then bend your knees and step forward and come up. So now take the chair away. We'll use the chair again, but not for now. So I'm going to move my chair and then stand into Dawson and then have, do we need a block? Um, we, we might need a block, but we also might need a blanket. So if you put blocks, blankets nearby, just in case. And then we're going to take our legs wide. Well, no, let's start in Tadasan. Why not be in Tadasan to start with? So we've been broadening, lifting, and extending, and giving ourselves a lot of space. Your spine should feel long. Your spine should feel long. So this action of lifting your chest away from the tops of your feet, away from the legs, the torso is going up, arms are down, breathe. Bring your hands in front of your chest, bend your knees, and step your feet wide. And then bring your hands to your waist immediately. And when your legs are wide, for many of us, many of us, uh, one leg is less comfortable than the other. Uh, and if that's the case for you, and even if it's not the case for you, let's all do the same thing. So we're going to bend our left, our right knee a little bit. I'm just near you. We're going to press every bit of weight into our left foot. So all, air all the weight is going to go to the left so that the toes, the metatarsals, the heels, the arches up, just press, 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 press. Then do the same with the right foot. So both feet get such a connection to the floor that my hips are like, oh, thank you. And the femurs are kind of really moved inside the hip sockets, which is really great. Elbows back behind you, lift your chest, breathe, Come forward, Prasarana Pado Tanasana, hands underneath you. This is where blocks come in. If you need blocks for your hands, blocks are fine. And your butt, once your palms come down, your chest lifts forward. So you're, you're not leaning your hips forward, you're leaning your chest forward and your hips stay back. It's as if I have a, 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 something holding the top of your legs back as you lift your torso away from them and lift your chest up. So this is a back bend and this is Prasarada Padrasanasana 1. It is a back bend in the upper back, but it really requires almost more length in the front body. So pubis stays back, chest lifts forward. You're right in the center. This is a very centered pose. Both feet are down, both arms are down, both arms are strong, lift your chest. Now, I need a blanket for my head, because I'm gonna put my head down now. Um, 
So I just know I will need one. So if you need anything for your head, that could be a block, that could be a blanket, but you then you move your hands back a little bit and you put your head down on the surface that you've provided for yourself. And then your back is more up and down and your hands are back by your feet. Your elbows are right over your forearms and hands. You're creating a right angle with your arms. Uh-huh, good. Good, 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 yeah, yeah. So let the back of your neck soften. So whatever you're touching, then we, we just wanna to touch it softly. But just feel like your back, the spinal area is just relaxed and your, your legs are holding it. Your legs are doing everything. That looks really good, really good. Nice. Now, we're gonna straighten our arms and lift our chest again. So then when you come back to this next part, it's much more extended again. So your hands stay back, your chest lifts up, and your shoulder blades move back, and the skin on your shoulder blades move back. Your ears don't do anything. Your shoulders move back. Then, now you might have to walk your feet in a little bit, but if you do or if you don't, you're gonna bring your hands to your hips, and then you're gonna bring your feet back in, heel, toe, heel, toe, and then you're gonna stand in Tadasana again. That's Prasarda Padutanasana one and two, which are very uh, calming. They should be calming. So now stand evenly on both feet in Tadasana. So as you're here, you know, now you're back to Tadasana. So now we're using Tadasana as our intermediary pose, as our pose that is sort of creating space between the other poses we're doing. So be on your heels as well as your metatarsals. And then so you're back into your heels, the top of your legs are back, because the top of the legs, they oftentimes want to come forward. So just be in your heels, and then lift all your toes up. Lift all your toes up. And then you stretch your arms down. When you lifted your toes up, did you start moving your hands too? I did. My hands started moving. <laughs> I don't think it needed that, but okay. So I'm really, really strong through the quadriceps now. And then bring the toes back down. So lift up more through the ribs, waist to the ribs in the back. And then bring your hands in front of your chest, bend your knees, step your feet wide, and bring your hands to your hips. And now, probably your legs feel more comfortable being wide than they did before. But I would say also that you could bring your feet in a little more narrow if you need to, or if you felt like you could be wider, that's true too. So both legs should be quite long, elbows toward each other, chest up, halfway down with our torso, hands underneath the shoulders. So the hands are under the shoulders, chest is lifting forward. Now take, I'm mirroring you, take your left hand to the center and put your right hand on your sacrum. So now don't go anywhere, just lift your chest away from your belly button. So put your, the top of your legs stay back, your torso lengthens, breathe, start twisting to the right, by lifting your uh, right ribs up and your left ribs underneath you, but don't change anything else. Don't change anything else. So you're not, both buttocks stay lifted, both heels are down, the twist is to the right. Come back to center. Substitute your right hand for your left hand. Bring your left hand to your sacrum. Be strongly into both legs, both sit bones. Turn to the left. So you're turning your elbow back and up. And then the, the right side of your torso is just extremely long. And then come back to center and put your left hand down. Put your right hand on your sacrum. Stretch into both legs, both sit bones, lengthen your torso, lengthen your spine. Turn to the right. Turn to the right. 
So now the right elbow goes up toward the ceiling and back toward the wall on the other side, if you can, and then come back to center. And put your right hand down, your left hand down to your sacrum, your torso is long, breathing, turn upward. Your left elbow goes up toward the ceiling and back behind you. Right torso lengthens, breathe. Now put both hands down. Walk your feet in a little bit. Bring your hands back to your waist. Come up. Bring your feet together. Now one thing that happens there is your head is down a bit. You know, we're bringing our head down. We're bringing our torso uh, parallel to the floor. It's just very different for our bodies. Arms down. Arms down. Tadasana. Be in your heels. Lift your toes up. Be in your heels. Lift your toes up. Inner legs now, feel like your inner legs are both stretching down into your inner heels and up into your um, groin area. So the inner legs are really long, outer legs really long. Place your toes back on the floor. Just see where you are balance wise. Lean forward, lift your heels up off the floor. Try to lift your heels up and then come down. <laughs> and then just put your hands on your waist, elbows back behind you, and with that, just take your legs wide. So wide, again, is a relative term because you want to feel comfortable. All we're going to do here is we're going to keep our prasarda legs, and we're going to be in a dog pose arms torso. So your legs hold back, your arms walk out, your feet are parallel, just stretch your arms away from you. No weight in your hands right now. And then pull your thigh skin up. Pull your thigh skin up and stretch your torso as long as you can. Just a nice long, what we call a hybrid pose. Prasarda legs, torso is really long, and you're breathing. Good. Really good. Really good. Now, just walk your hands back. Walk your feet in and carefully come up. So just carefully come up. Good, good. Now, um, we're going to lie down and we're going to have a block. So have a block. And uh, we're going to just work a little bit on it. So just to tell you what we're doing. So we're doing uh, a setubanda, a little bit of setubanda on the block. And then we're going to do a bit with that. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna lie on our back and we're gonna do some back hip work, okay? And then we'll go into Shavasana. So, but I always like to have some form of uh, an inversion into my practice, and it will be this today. So, having said all that, we're gonna put our block to the side as we lie down on our back with our knees bent. So just doing everything you know to take the shoulder blades toward the buttocks and to take the buttocks away from the waist. So you should feel like your shoulder blades are not flat on the floor. I mean, they are on the floor, but try to lift the bottom of your shoulder blades up into your chest just a little bit. I mean, it's not a lot yet. It's going to get quite a bit in a minute. Now we're going to take that block. We're just going to do the three options because I like everybody out of options. So we're going to first take the block at the lowest level under our, our sacrum. So when you do that, you know, this is the default option for lower back issues, but just notice when you did that, how your shoulder blades lifted up toward your chest a little more, right? Because you you lifted your hips up and your weight has shifted toward your chest. And then what we really like is take your hands toward your feet and take your shoulders toward your hips and lift your chest way up over your throat. Well, that's the idea. And breathe. And then press your um, So now we're going to do something that is going to help us the rest of the Satyabhanda. We're going to press our heels down and we're going to contract our, um, our hamstrings. Feel like your hamstrings are not stretchy, but they're strong. And then press your heels down, lift up, and put the block at the second level. 
So now we're at the second level, which is where we could stay. And this would be just fine. It's right through the center of your sacrum, both sides of your sacrum. Or for a lot of us, we can go to the third level and we would like to. So if you would like to, you lift your hips way up and turn the block to the higher level. And you hear my voice change immediately because my throat now and my, um, my throat and my chest are really getting to know each other. And that's a good thing. And my shoulder blades now are way up, perpendicular to the floor, right? So even if you're on the second level, do that. Create this length of the shoulder blades going way up. Now, so your hands could be um, in a clasp behind your block. Your hands could be in a shavasana. Your arms could be in saguaro cactus, okay? You make your choice. It doesn't matter, and you can switch and try all three. Lift your right leg up. Now it's for the inversion. You feel when you lift your right leg up, the energy move toward your heart. And that's the whole idea of an inversion, is to change the energy away from the direction it normally is into the upside down idea, which the chest and the heart are prominent. Stretch your leg, stretch your right leg, inner leg, outer leg, everything. Bend your knee in toward your chest. Bring your foot down to the floor. Contract your hamstrings. Your hamstrings should feel, this is, if you have a hamstring injury, this is an excellent way to work on it. Bring your left knee in toward your chest. Lift your left leg up. Now you're not contracting the left hamstring anymore because it's stretching. So the left heel goes up. Try to be on both. It's the size of the sacrum evenly, length on both sides of the torso. Lift your chest towards your chin, breathe. The left leg is up. So you can feel the difference into your brain almost immediately. Um, and that is a, a well-known uh, reflex. It's a relaxation reflex. It takes the weight towards your chest, towards your throat, and it softens the prefrontal cortex activity. Bring your left leg down. If it's available to you to bring both legs up, do. If you can bring both legs up, do. So this is what we call Setu Bandha with Viparita Karani. So as you're, if you can do that. Otherwise, feet can stay down. One leg can go up at a time. There's options. And breathe. But if both legs are up, that's fine too. Stretching your legs up and your chest toward your chin, your chest really toward your throat. They say that the chest comes over the throat and that is, creates this relaxation reflex called the barrel reflex. And it's really nice for the, um, for the brain because it just takes all that busyness that we experience and it just sort of flattens that out a little bit. If your legs are up and together, that's fine. Take your legs wide. If you can, just take your legs wide. And then bring your legs back up together. And then bend your left knee, take your left foot down. Stretch your right leg up. Switch. Take the right foot down, lift your left leg up. Extend. Bring both legs down. Now, now, both feet are on the floor. And just really contract your hamstrings and your abdomen, firm your abdomen, lift your buttocks up, take the block away to the second level. So we move it from the third to the second level or from the second to the first, and then we relax. Now, just to tell you why I was contracting my hamstrings so crazily and why I was at my hips and abdomen and hamstrings, it really helps my lower back. <laughs> and it really, when I'm making this movement. So again, I'm gonna contract my hamstrings, I'm gonna firm my hips, my abdomen, and I'm gonna move to the first level. See, I've learned that if I come down too quickly from this, and I don't do all this work of firming the sacral band and the hamstrings, my back doesn't like it. So I'm gonna, again, firm everything and press into the heels 
and take that block away entirely and lie down on your back. Now you're on your back, no support, no support. You know, you're just flat on your back. Your knees can be bent. Your knees can be bent. Now take your right knee into your chest and stretch your left leg out onto the floor. So just stretch your left leg away from you, bring your right knee towards you. And this is a very familiar uh, pose that we do, and it's really nice for our back. Now, bring your left knee into your chest, put your right foot on the floor, and lengthen your right foot away so that your right leg is on the floor. So your left knee is holding in, your right leg is stretching out. Now bring your left knee in, your right knee in. Both knees are in now. Both knees are in and you're holding behind your knees and just pressing your thighs towards your chest. Just gently, it should feel really nice. This is not one of those, oh, this is too much. No, this is good. If it isn't good, don't do it. Just breathe. Now put both feet on the floor and then straighten your legs out into what we call a supta tadasana. So before I do that though, I have to bend my knees, put my feet on the floor, lengthen my lower back, then I straighten my legs. So then I kind of go side to side with my uh, weight on my buttocks. I want the weight to be on the lower part of my buttocks, not toward my waist. You should feel a curve in your lower back. You should feel like your thighs are pressing down and your metatarsals are straight, inner balls of your feet stretch away from your inner legs. So everything is really nice and long and your arms are on the floor and you're just breathing, supta tadasana. Now keep that in your body, except take your arms to the side, palms up. I have to scoot. I want both arms to be equally stretched. Now you're in supta tadasana with your arms to the side. Yeah, everything is good. Every adjustment you need to make is made. We all know how to adjust ourselves because we want our shoulder blades to move toward our buttocks, but we want our lower back to be curved, not to feel strained. Now, breathe, and you're going to uh, take your right heel, Achilles, between your left big toe and second toe, maybe, or else you're just gonna rest your right heel on the left metatarsal. You know, somehow, and it's kind of strange, I know. And then we're going to take our left hand to our right shoulder, and we're just going to keep it there, not to press, but just for support. And then breathe. Look at the ceiling. Look at the ceiling, because you're not going to be in a second. Look at the ceiling, feel centered, and come toward your left hip. You're using your right hand right arms to stretch away and you come toward your left hip and so it's odd and then you stretch toward both feet and legs so really and you'll feel the firmness through the hips and then you come back down and then take that foot away from your uh, <laughs> toes and then stretch your left arm to the side breathe breathe because probably doing that, if you have not done that before, doing it took all your energy and you forgot to breathe. Now, pick your left Achilles heel up and stick it between your right toe, big toe, and second toe, if it appreciates that. Otherwise, just rest it somehow. But don't let your right leg change too much. Now you're gonna take your right hand to your left shoulder. You know, it's not doing much, it's just there. And then we roll toward the right, onto, toward the right hip, maybe even onto the right hip. And one side might be different. Now stretch through your legs, stretch through your legs and just breathe. And then come back to center, undo. So now just make any adjustment you need to with your buttocks, your legs, everything should really feel uh, firm and connected to the floor. Spread your arms to the side again. Take your right heel through your left toes and then take your uh, left hand to your right shoulder. And now we're just gonna see. So look at the ceiling, just be calm. 
know before where you went and, and see if it's different this time and not to worry about it because there's no goal here. But it's just to turn your hips, really. So you just take your right hip off the floor, right butt off the floor, and take your weight over to the left hip, left butt. You see if you can roll further, but you do what you can and then stretch through your legs. So this is really not a huge motion, but it's an energetic motion towards your feet and towards your legs and your hips are really firm and then come back and undo. Spread your left arm, take your left heel toward your right toes, your right hand to your left shoulder, breathe and turn again. So not a big action, but you're turning away toward your right hip. You take your left butt off the floor, you roll over to the right, wherever you can go, and you stretch your legs away from you. It isn't that your legs aren't going away from you. You stretch into that action and breathe, and then come back to center, and then undo. Now put both feet on the floor and pick your right foot up and reach for the outside of your right foot. And then don't take your right leg so far to the right that you come off the left butt. Try to take your right knee kind of in line with your right armpit and your right foot is facing the ceiling. And then stretch, straighten your left leg if you can. And then pull the right thigh toward the floor. It's just a big action through the quadricep on the right side. If you can lift your left leg off the floor, off the floor and stretch into the metatarsal and the heel, do that and breathe. And then replace, if you have your left leg off the floor, put it back on and then bend your right knee, put your foot on the floor stretch your um, stretch your right leg straight and then bring your left leg up left foot up grab the outside of your left foot you're trying to keep your right buttock down but your left leg to the side left thigh to the side kind of the knee coming toward the armpit on the left side breathe if you can lift your right leg off the floor to do that and then press both directions if your heel's on the floor on the right side, that's fine. But just stretch into the heel, into the metatarsal, and press the thigh down. Both buttocks stay down. Breathe. And then undo and bring your, um, bring your feet onto the floor. Now, take your left leg and straighten. No, take your right ankle across your left knee. And then levelize your buttocks knowing that your left, your left buttock wants to react. Don't let it react. Take the right thigh and rotate it externally. And then breathe and slide your left foot out onto the floor and take your right knee with you. So now you're in what we call Supta Jhana Shishasana. You're, it's not really Jhana Shishasana, but it is that angle with the right knee and the right ankle. And then, so your ankle is resting over your knee and just try to restore some weight towards your left buttock as your right knee relaxes away from the ankle. It's a rotation at the top of your right thigh. And then hold on to the outside of your right thigh and just bring the foot back onto the floor. So your right foot is on the floor by your inner right knee. Now take your right foot over your knee toward the left side of your left knee. And then spread your arms to the side. And then try to levelize your hips. And then undo. Now put both feet on the floor, knees are bent. Take your left ankle across your right knee. Levelize your buttocks. I have to, I make, I have to, do that because my buttocks are so uh, stubborn. They do whatever they want to do until I tell them otherwise. Rotate the left thigh externally. Slide the right heel out. You're taking your left knee with you when you come down. So now your shin on the left side 
should be parallel to the floor. Your left knee is not on the floor. You can take your arms to the, well, we don't need to that yet, but you're just stretching. You're in the supta, supta jhana shashasana. So your left leg really feels like it has to do something. The hip has to rotate, doesn't it? The thigh has to rotate, the hip has to firm. And now uncross the, the knee with your ankle and put your foot on the floor to your inner right knee and then take it to the outer right knee. I don't, might not have said that right before. Your, your foot is actually over the knee to the other side. Spread your arms to the side. Lengthen your hips. Breathe. Now undo, put both feet on the floor and straighten your left leg and bring your right knee in towards your chest. So you're holding onto your right knee, your left leg. We know this one. The right knee moves forward, the left leg moves away onto the floor. Now your left hand comes to the outside of your right knee, your right arm comes to the side, roll over toward your left hip. So my left, my right knee is not going to come to the floor because I don't want my right shoulder to come up. So whatever happens here is really about the right shoulder, right armpit, left, right knee, but everything is just maintaining a lot of stability through the upper body. And then you're going to come back to center. And then bring your left knee into your chest, your right leg out, stretch, hold on to the outside of the left knee with your right hand, take your left arm to the side, shoulder down, take your left knee over to the right, only as far as you can go, holding on to your left shoulder blade, your left armpit very open, breathing. And then undo and Shavasana. So Shavasana can be uh, with the bolster under your knees, the chair under your shins, your legs up the wall, completely flat, anything that would feel comfortable to you because you know this pose and you know how you want it to be today. The most important thing is to get to somewhere that you like and feel comfortable with. So once you get to your spot, get to your place, get to your Shavasana, make sure you lengthen the back of your head away from your shoulders. Just make sure that your neck feels soft and long and your shoulders are down and your collarbones are broad. So whatever we're doing, always that. We always want to feel like right across the chest, there's um, extension away from the center toward the armpits, toward the elbows, toward the hands. Just a nice, big, broad stretch across the chest. And when you do that, it also just softens and stretches a little bit the throat. So just, just be in your body with your chest as broad as possible. Shoulder blades right underneath you. Breathing. Just your torso relax, soften. So we've been working with our torso, our arms, and our legs, and our head, and now all of those will, will relax. So your legs are just feel heavy, outstretched from your um, torso, or up on a lift, or over a bolster, but whatever they are on, they are not working. They are completely relaxed, let go. Just let go of your legs. Let your legs be heavy, soft, and your arms stretch to the side probably, or however you're doing this, but let your arms relax and soften. Your palms should be out. Breathe. Just start the breathing more consciously now. The inhale, the exhale. Just notice how soft it's getting. The breath gets softer as we lie down, but the breath is sufficient. It's just perfect, whatever it is. The back body takes all the weight, 
not that it's doing anything to take the weight, it's just relaxing and taking the weight. And the weight of our torso relaxes into our back body. So the feeling is heavy and really soft, really soft. Just letting go, letting go of everything. Now, all the things we did, you know, during Shavasana, we, we give thanks for what we did, but we don't attach to it. We move away from that. We're, you know, what we did is what we did. Now here we are. And we are trying to soften, let go, go inside even more deeply. So this is the innermost self that we've been seeking, and it's right here. It's right here, right in the center of us, our heart, our central nervous system, our body, our mind. Everything is everything is in and in, integrated now into the softest relaxation, letting go. Just the breathing is so, so nourishing and so relaxing. The inhalation so nourishing, the exhalation so relaxing. But now just with your awareness into your breathing, be more aware of your inhalation and slightly deeper. So your inhale is just a little bit deeper now. Your exhale a little bit longer. Just coming back to your day through the inhale, being deeper, the exhale being longer. Place your hands on your abdomen and thank your body. And then when you're ready, and just always when you're ready, just roll over to the right side, rest with your head on your arm. Just resting for a second, no hurry. Kind of what we do here is we symbolize the idea of no hurry. <laughs> you know, if we come up too fast, we've undone so much. Don't come up too fast. Come up really softly, slowly. Then you just keep a little bit of that shavasana with you all day long. You just come up and you stay a little more relaxed if you can. Bring your hands in prayer. Lift your chest up. Elbows down, armpits up. Namaste.